with Mind Matters doing our second video on OCD. Real quick here, this is a case study coming up of a young man who had a bit of a hard start in life, lost his dad, had some selective mutism for about a year, which morphed into some pretty chronic OCD to be alleviated through deep brain stimulation, which is pretty cool. So as neuroscientists, it's our job to see if we can use our tools to figure out if there are brain anomalies in clinical populations and if there's anything we can learn about them to help them. And in the case of OCD, the answer is yes. There is an area in the frontal midsection, so if we were to draw a line from here and here down, right where those lines would meet, frontal midsection, there is an area down there where the activity is anomalous in OCD, and when we stimulate that region, we can actually help seriously alleviate their OCD symptoms. This is obviously something for chronic OCD, seeing that you have to actually open up the cranium and put something in there, but for people who have debilitating OCD, this is actually saving their lives. Let's look at this case study. He had friendships and he was funny and goofy and spontaneous and loud. He was normal. Normal, a life filled with hope and possibility, would not last long for Brett Larson. The change began when Brett was 10. His father had died. He was virtually mute for a year. He did not speak at all. I didn't understand it at all, none of us did. But this was not typical grieving. It was full-blown anxiety. So Brett's brain began concocting unusual coping mechanisms. I get a bad thought, like someone, someone's gonna die. No, I just got the thought in my head. Maybe if I flip the light switch off and on a certain amount of times, maybe I could control it somehow. At 12, Brett was diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD. Imagine a broken record and you have a sense about his life. On a typical day, a shower can take 45 minutes. Getting dressed even longer. Putting on his shoes, he just could take hours. He'll put them on and take them off and turn them around and put them on and take them off. Think of OCD as a neurological hiccup, faulty wiring in the brain. Some, it spills over into Brett's speech. Some, some, someone wants to have a, a normal life, better life. Years of therapy, medication, even hospitalization didn't help. I know that Brett has a lot of normal in him. He's still that goofy kid. And there are moments when he's free enough of anxiety that he can express that. But it's only moments. It's not days, it's not hours, it's, it's not enough. This, his doctors believe, is both his best and last hope. Deep brain stimulation, or DBS. How are you feeling right now, Brett? Uh, I'm feeling like laughing. <laughs> feeling happy? Laughing. Like Electrodes are being placed within Brett's brain tissue to basically short circuit the signals that cause so much anxiety and fear. When we're stimulating, he started laughing and he started, be you know, he became really happy. His mood was really elevated. He was talking a lot better. You feel like laughing for some reason. <laughs> you feel like laughing? That's good. good. We want to know when you're having those feelings, Brett. Tell us. Later, when the electrodes are turned on with a continuous electrical current, Brett's doctors are betting that his neurological hiccups will be fixed. Hi, Brett. How are you doing? Good. Pretty good. How are you? Good. Very good. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Oh, sure. Just a few weeks now since his operation and Brett is having the electrodes implanted in his brain turned on. Feel any changes? Any strange sensations anywhere? I just feel like laughing like I like get surgery. <laughs> but it will take several months and several adjustments to the electrical current for Brett to find out if those feelings will last. I'm just gonna be looking at you all night. So. <laughs> A few months later, progress. It's up, and it's down. When they bump up the, the, the level, sometimes after I, it's been a week or so, I, I might have a hard time for a little while, but then it, it gets better. It's not quite where he wants it to be, but he's inching toward it. And today, 
Brett is going in for what doctors think is his final adjustment. Off to see the wizard. How long did it take you to get to the car this morning? It was a breeze. A few seconds. A few yeah. seconds. And before the surgery, how long would it take sometimes? Do you uh, want me to say it or do you? <laughs> okay. I mean, sometimes it would take hours. Normal activities, conversing, relating, feeling unstuck, they're all getting easier. I feel like I'm getting you know, better like, you know, every day a little bit. Normal. It was so fleeting for decades, but it's now creeping back into Brett Larson's life. Before I had the surgery, I couldn't work. I felt like I couldn't do a lot of things, but I feel like I'm more able to achieve the things I want to do since I've had the surgery. Hi guys, Dr. Lori Sesson for Mind Matters, and that was our second video on OCD. Tune in next week for a new topic.